Good morning, everyone. My name is Maggie Siegel, and today I'll be teaching you about a wonderful math concept called Simpson's Paradox, or the Yule Simpson effect. And no, I don't mean this kind of Simpson. Unfortunately, you've come down with a horrible sickness called Maggieitis. Don't worry, it's very common, but you're wildly obsessed with me. Lucky for you, two drug companies have created a drug to help cure this disease. Drug company A and drug company B. Before you decide which drug you're going to use, you look up some research that's been done by a research team. This research team conducted two rounds of experiments on both of the drugs, testing different numbers of people infected and showing how many were cured. In the first round of testing, company A cured 63 out of 90 infected people, giving it a success rate of 70%. Company B cured 8 out of 10, giving it a success rate of 80%. On the second testing day, company A cured 4 out of 10 people, giving it a 40% success rate, and company B 45 out of 90, giving it a 50% success rate. You decide to choose company B because it had a better success rate on both days. But this is when Simpson's Paradox comes into play. When we pool the data together and look at how many were cured out of 100, we can see that in fact many more were cured with drug A despite the lower success rates, giving company A a real success rate of 67% versus company B's only 53%, making company A the better choice. Simpson's Paradox, or the Yule Simpson effect, according to Princeton University, is an apparent paradox in which a trend present in different groups is reversed when the groups are combined. This essentially means that things aren't always as they seem, and sometimes in data we find that our answer is wrong once we put everything together. This paradox was first discovered in 1973 when the University of California Berkeley was sued for sex discrimination against women. When looking at the data, the research team could see that individually each of the admittance statistics was in favor of men. But when pooled the data together, they found that there was actually a small but statistically significant bias in favor of women. Simpson's paradox did not stop there. There have been many examples since this of the paradox all over the world, ranging from data on different types of surgery and their success rates, going to things like airplane statistics and best routes, even sex of psychiatric hospital patients and studies of mortality and diabetes. But this awesome paradox does not always show the right answer. For example, when applying this paradox to a study done in the UK showing different factors that affected people's health and mortality, one of the things it covered was cigarette smoking and whether it has any health effects. Within each individual group of data covered, smoking had increased mortality across the board. But when pooled, 43% of non-smokers died, whereas only 38% of smokers died. In this case, the age, health, and other factors weren't taken into consideration, making Simpson's paradox essentially show that smoking is saving lives. So, next time you see a commercial or advertisement showing research in different groups of data, question it. Maybe when properly pooled, Simpson's paradox is there, just waiting to be seen. Want some practice? Go on the VidLab website, and not only will you see a great description of this paradox, but you can also look at some really cool interactive data sets and try and figure out whether Simpson's paradox is present in them or not. Thanks for listening, and please check the description below for my sites and sources. Have a wonderful day.